We're back with the breakfast, and it's uh, you know the very first uh, you know segment here, if you like to say, or topic for us. We're looking at the power sector, especially generation. However, there's been several reports about you know our, gener our generating capacity and the fact that we've lost resources. The availability of generation capacity in Nigeria's power sector dropped again in 2022 as it crashed from six million three hundred and thirty six thousand point five two megawatts recorded in 2021 to five million three hundred and forty six thousand point eight two megawatts as of okay that's uh five thousand of course uh, five thousand three hundred and forty six point uh eight two and of course uh, six thousand three hundred and thirty six point five two uh that was of last year data being made available to electricity generation has been reported. It was also observed that the annual capacity payment lost to power generation companies had increased to 1.8 trillion naira, as data from the document further showed a decrease in the average utilized power in uh, 2022. Now, figures obtained from the power generation companies indicated that while the average quantum of electricity utilized in 2021 was around 4,000 111.98 megawatt it dropped to 3940.54 megawatts you know in 2022 the document on power generation trend uh, that's between 2013 where it was privatized to uh, 2022 shows that Nigeria's average availability our available generation capacity fluctuated between 4,000 megawatts and 7,700 megawatts since the sector was privatized uh, then in 2013. So uh, there are too many questions around, you know, generation of power. If we're looking at the power sector, uh, what exactly is responsible for the stagnation of power generation since it was privatized and all of the excuses for privatization? And now how do we solve the problem of unutilized generation? Because it's one thing to say we're not even generating enough to cater for the population uh, that we have 218 million persons. Uh, but what do we also do? Do we evacuate all of the powers that we generate or that's been generated? These are some of the uh, conversations that we'd like to understand and have answers to this morning to make sense of all of that. Nick Agule joins us. Nick, it's, it's so good to know that you're joining us this morning uh, from Makadi. Uh, thank you very much, Messi. Hi. I'm happy to be here. And good morning to our viewers. So, but really, let's, let's talk about this. Uh, what are your thoughts, an overview of this uh, report? This report is overwhelming because the power situation, Nigeria, the power situation in Nigeria is shameful. Shameful because Nigeria is a gas-producing nation. And all over the world, as we speak today, regardless of the developments that are happening in the renewable energy sector, gas is the largest source of power generation in the world as we speak today. So to think that a country that is a major gas producer, in fact, Nigeria, has more gas resources than crude oil, that this nation is unable to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity to her citizens is very shameful. This is one of the things that Nigeria shouldn't be suffering from, but because of the ineptitude in our leadership, we are suffering. Nigeria should actually be generating close to 200,000 megawatts of electricity per day because that is the global average. That is the global benchmark that you generate 1,000 megawatts per 1 million people. So if Nigeria is 200 million people and above, then our electricity generation should be getting to the 200,000 megawatts. And we are doing 4,000, 3,000, 
5,000, as the report you are quoting is showing. Imagine that you should be earning 200,000, but you are only earning 4,000 naira. Poverty will not flee from you. And that is why Nigeria is pinned down in poverty because there is a direct correlation between electricity and development. In this modern industrial and info age, if you have no electricity, you can never have development. So it is shameful is the submission and my summary to this report. Well, we, we know that the figures have been dropping uh, since 2018. I mean, at some point, it felt like it was better. But from 2018, the figures, you know, keep dropping. But looking at the sector entirely, uh, we have been looking at 100 megawatts growth in the past sector for a very long time now. That's an annual thing, especially since uh, privatization. So m my question is, do you think that we have a future? There's a future of uh, a power generation in Nigeria with the 100 uh, megawatts growth that's been recorded in the sector? At 100 megawatts increase in generation per year, there is no future. It is abysmally so low, it can never be said there is a future. But you see, like we said the other day, we can no longer be advising President Buhari because he has five months left in his tenure. I believe that President Buhari will be by now writing his handover notes. So our attention is turning to the new government that will take power on May the 29th. To that government, I want to say that you can bring hope, you can bring the future into the Nigerian power sector in very easy ways. Number one, Nigeria is producing gas and a large quantum of that gas is being fled. Once the next government comes into office, they should stop gas flaring. And what then do you do with the gas? You channel those that gas into turbines. Messi, the concept of power generation using gas is so, so simple. There is an equipment that is called a turbine. When you install that equipment, you pack gas into that equipment. On the other side, we call electricity. It is as simple as that. And these turbines are available all over the world. They can be bought off the shape. Some can be manufactured within weeks. A turbine is manufactured because the technology is already there. It is tested. It's been there over time. And it's just for the next president to commission a tax force that will start installing turbines all over the Niger Delta so that the gas that is being fled today will be piped into those turbines and electricity will be generated for Nigeria. You see, the other thing is, we have a transmission capacity of about 12,000 megawatts. And generation so far, as you have seen in this report, is hovering between anything 3,000 to 6,000. So that means there is capacity on transmission where if this electricity that will be generated by these turbines is pushed in, transmission will carry it. And when transmission carries it, it will then go to distribution. When it goes to distribution, you can see clearly today that there is a market for electricity that is not being fulfilled. Anywhere there is power failure in Nigeria today, that's a market that distribution is unable to fulfill. So the next government can set up this tax force, and I tell you, within six months, we are going to begin to experience major differences in the electricity sector, and we will no longer be talking about 100 megawatts increase. We'll be talking about thousands. 5,000, 10,000 increase yearly until we at least get to like 50,000. Then we will begin to know that, okay, we have started making progress in the electricity sector. So that is what the next government has to do. And, I, and I'm not yet speaking about the other energy sources that we have. Nigeria has an abundance of energy sources. We have the sunlight daily, almost 8 to 10 hours of pure sunshine, 
You go to Europe now, it's winter, they will not see sunshine for more than two hours. We have water, all the rivers can be converted to hydroelectricity. Then we have uh, the wind. We have the wind. If you go to the bad beach in Lagos, it's just of turbines, wind turbines, and electricity will be generated for the entire Lagos without you needing any other source. And you know, the difference between wind, tor wind turbines and solar is that solar, you need batteries because in the night, there will be no sun. For wind, the wind is 24 7. So you don't even need batteries. You just generate the thing from the wind turbine and supply to Lagos, and you are sure that that wind is going to blow for 24 hours a day. There are, in fact, it's, it's just a low hanging fruit pen. So 100 megawatts is abysmal, but the next government can actually make it five to 10,000 megawatts if they do the right things. Hmm. So the right things you have said would be what? Uh, do you want to go through that again systematically? Yes. So the right thing will be first, instead of flaring our gas in the Niger Delta, install turbines, which are very much available because the technology is well known, is tested, it's been there over time. Install the turbines, pipe that gas into the turbines. On the other side, there will be electricity. That's one. Number two, begin to tap into the renewable energy sources. Every river in Nigeria should be dammed. When you dam a river, this is the economy that develops from that damming. Number one, hydroelectricity will be generated for the communities around that river. Number two, you can use that for irrigation. That's agriculture. Number three, you can use that for fishing. Number four, you can use that for drinking water. So the simple concept of, of damming a river, this is the economy that develops from it. And I can tell you that there is no community in Nigeria that does not have a river. Very recently, I flew on, on a plane from Abuja to, to Yola in Adamawa State. It was the first time I was flying to the north, northeast. And I was so, so, so surprised to see the quantum of land that Nigeria has for agriculture and the number of rivers I saw below. As in like every community I was seeing rivers. And that's, that's electricity for you. And so we talk about the gas turbines. We talk about the, the water dams. We talk about wind turbines. Put wind turbines on the bad beach. And they are going to rotate every day 24-7, generating labor, I mean electricity for the entire Southwest. Yeah? Then we're, we're, we're talking about, I, I don't even want to talk about things like biomass. You know, because these other sources are even in us. You have the sunshine there, pure sunshine, eight to ten hours of sunshine, guaranteed every day. Go to every community and install the, 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 the solar panels and generate electricity and give them there. You know, if they have anything left, put it in the national grid. So this is the things that need to happen. The entire electricity sector needs to be unbundled. Because you know one thing now, people talk about privatization. But you see, we privatize generation. We also privatize distribution. But there is a, a, a behemoth in between that is called transmission. Transmission was not privatized. It is in the hands of a government that does not have money. A government that is born to pay salaries. That government has not been able to increase the capacity on the transmission. So what it means is that if you generate, transmission must carry it first. And if transmission is not there, your generation is useless. For you to distribute, transmission must give you that power to distribute. If they don't give you that power to distribute, you have nothing to distribute. So why has government created this bottleneck between a privatized generation and a privatized distribution? So the next government must have to unbundle the whole of this thing, privatize the entire value chain on the power sector. And I tell you, Messi, look, the opportunities are there because we are a country of 200 million people. That is demand. That is demand for electricity. So, uh, and then we have the energy sources. Nika, so what is left? Put them together. You know, you know that's going to be that's that's going to be you know another part of the conversation. So we'll definitely get to that part where 
if we have the market. And uh, the question will follow whether or not we have the market for all of that. But um, when you say a country that does not have money, is it a country that does not have money or is a country that is wasting money? Or wasting resources or has been very you know flamboyant with her resources my, some people will say is a I know one bear government we're throwing parties not necessarily physical parties but you know with the way we are locating resources to things that are not priority is as, as, as what um, people have talked about but um, I, I like also to us to talk about this issue of the fact that we're not even generating enough to meet up with the standard, universal standard of generation and also to meet up with our population. But we also have the point where even with the fact that we're still grappling with 4,000, 3,000 megawatts, we're still unable to evacuate all of the powers that we have generated or all that we have generated. And so uh, we're still, um, you know, around 1,000 megawatts and 3,700 megawatts. I mean, what exactly is the problem? That we're not even generating enough, but as much as we're even generating 4,000, we're not even still able to evacuate all that we have generated. What is the problem and how do we solve it? Well, thank you very much. Uh, before I answer that question, uh, I want to touch on the very valid point that you have raised about what is Nigeria's problem? Is it that we don't have money or we are being wasteful with the money that we have? I think it's both. Both because Nigeria's federal government budget, I mean, this budget that President Buhari just signed of uh, two trillion, if you convert that into dollars, it's not even up to 40 uh, billion dollars. It's not even up to 40 billion. And uh, the same yesterday that President Buhari was signing that budget, we were being told about Apple, Apple, the maker of iPhones and iPads and all of that that their market capitalization just fell below the $2 trillion mark for the first time in a few years. $2 trillion. And Nigeria, a country of 200 million people, we are, we are signing a budget of uh, $40 billion. $40 billion, And we are, we are making a match out of it. So the, no, the money, number one, is not enough. But then, double jeopardy is that the small money that we have is being looted, is being wasted. So that is why we are pinned down where we are. Now, when we come to the question you have raised about generation and what needs to be done, you see, the, 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 the problem in Nigeria is that we, we try to do things, but maybe because of vested interest uh, or whatever, we don't do them the right way. The generation privatization process has happened and a chunk of the the um, the, the power power uh, plants are now in the hands of the private sector but the private sector is not going to be able to generate what transmission cannot carry they are not going to be able to generate what distribution will not be able to supply now Transmission, number one, is in the hands of the government, which, which is a bottleneck. Then distribution was not privatized in the right way. You will see that uh, there is no major power player in the whole world that is in the distribution sector. It's different from when we privatize telecoms. When we privatize telecoms, the MTNs that came, the ATSALAs and all of that that came, were already players in the telecoms sector in the region and elsewhere in the world, you know? And when they came in, they were able to come in with their money, their expertise, their technology to change the telecoms sector in Nigeria. The distribution that has happened in Nigeria, uh, I mean, we know the owners. Majority of the owners are politically exposed persons, you know? They have no pedigree in the power sector. They, they don't understand the industry. They don't even have the money to invest. And so that has now become a problem on its own. So you can see that these are the issues that are involved in the whole value chain of the, of the power sector. In fact, if you ask me, I will say that generation is the least of the problem. Because the people who have invested in, in, um, in, in generation, they have capacity. The last of Tony Elumelu, they have the capacity to increase uh, capacity in that sector. But transmission is a bottleneck which the next government must unbundle 
and then distribution privatization has to be redone so that it is now given to those who are major players in the power sector who have what it takes to change that sector until we do this we'll continue to have these conversations and there'll be no change well, um, so let's even talk about the fact that we have a vision called Vision, uh, you know, 2030, right? And so we're looking at uh, Vision 2030 generating 30,000 megawatts. Is it viable with uh, 100 megawatts annually for a period of time? It's certainly not viable at, at 100 megawatts a year increase in power sector generation. Uh, if you if you want to move from uh, so 100 megawatts means you need 10 years to have 1,000 megawatts. So for you to get to te uh, 30,000, that means you need uh, 300 years. So <laughs> it's it's not achievable. But look, uh, Messi, the opportunity. Did you say 300? <laughs> yeah, because you need 10 years. You need Nika 10 Gule. years to do uh, 1,000 megawatts. Nika Gule, maybe that's so for you to go to. Maybe for you to go to 30,000 megawatts, you need 300 years. Because 10 years will give you 3,000 megawatts. I mean, imagine me you know, reading those figures as, you know, 5 million and 6 million. I apparently, I'm sure I was looking at some other thing. I was looking at us in a different light. But we need just 700. Because, I mean, if we, if we, if we say that, okay, 100 is what we're doing, and then in terms of growth. So if we can increase yeah. uh, the capacity to say about 700, 800, then we probably would, would be there. So what's exactly the issue? 2030 is not far from us. We've talked about 2023. Today we're here in 2023. 2025 is not far. You know, you talk about 2030 is as close as we're looking at it now. So um, if it's not viable, what exactly is left? How much more of the megawatts? Do we need to make 1,000 so we can get there? Is it that we lack the capacity? What exactly is the challenge? Because that's what we have. So there's a vision, there's a plan by the government, of course, which is led by the Buhari's administration. And we know that, you know, this is actually a Futuristic. We hope that the government comes, the next government comes in place, and they're also looking at this direction. But can we get to, you know, um, 30,000 megawatts by, you know, 2030? So, Messi, you have touched on the nerves of the conversation. And as you say, what's the issue? What's the challenge? There is only one issue. There's one challenge in this whole thing we're discussing. And the answer is simple. The government is superintending over the power sector the government is a player in the power sector and i can tell you globally any sector where the government is in charge doesn't do well and when you now look at nigeria where institutions are not strong and all of that it even compounds the problem what is the simple solution the simple solution is to do to the power sector what we have done to the telecom sector. I, I, I don't know how old you were there, but Messi, when I was growing up, for you to make a phone call, you will go to Nitez's office, maybe in the midnight, and go and queue up, and then buy those cards and try to make a phone call. You know, the Nitez had this, uh, what we call, not nine not, which was their, their mobile phone then, which was only available in big cities like Abuja and Lagos. You know, there were, there were, in fact, a, a minister, a minister in the government as a then said telephone was not for the poor. This was the kind of shenanigans that we're hearing in the telecom sector. Why? Because a government behemoth called Niter was in charge. Fast forward to the 2000s when privatization came in and the MTNs came in and they brought their money, their expertise, their technology. Today, we have phone coverage. From an average of about 500,000 lines before privatization, Nigeria is having uh, almost 200 million lines of telephone today. And the contribution to the GDP is humongous. From a mere less than 1%, we're talking about 20% now. So that is what happens when you privatize. So the simple solution to this is that just hand over the past sector the same way we did telecoms to the private sector. And once you do that, Messi, look, you will not even know that this is Nigeria again. Because the power sector have a, 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 a bigger impact on the economy and development than even the telecoms. And you know, everything is in place. We started to talk about demand. 
There was a professor that sat, a professor in Lagos. He said he's a professor in the power sector. He sat on TV and was saying that, oh, in Nigeria, one of the problems in Nigeria, the electricity sector, is that there is no demand. And I wrote an article to criticize him. And when I wrote the article, I, I pointed the professor to the fact that anywhere in Nigeria you see a generator, anywhere, from the Abeta pass you generator to the humongous 500 uh, mega, uh, I mean, uh, 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 500 kVA that you see, even 1,000 kVA that you see in Nigeria, that is demand that is not fulfilled by the electricity sector. This generator in Nigeria is demand that the electricity sector did not fulfill. If the electricity sector fulfilled that demand, the generator will not be there. So there is demand. Then the energy sources are there. We'll discuss about them. What is there for left? It's just to convert the energy, uh, energy uh, resources, put them to where the demand is. So, so that so we can so carry all these generators who are planted every place and, and export them. Uh, if Nigeria has 24 7 power like, supply, we, we, we need, need a go. generator again. Now, we, we need to go. I mean, you have said that we have the markets because I was going to ask that if we do have a market. I mean, what's the essence of saying that you have a market and then you don't have the structure? So if you say we have a market, what is the, you know, dynamics uh, surrounding it? So we have a market. And like I said, every generator in Nigeria is demand for electricity that is not being fulfilled. So, so the simple dynamics here is this. We have the supply we, through the energy resources we have. We have the market. What is in between is to be able to convert those energy resources into electricity, transmit it, and distribute it. But this cannot happen if the government is superintending over the sector. So, the so government must let go the electricity sector the way they did telecoms. That is the answer. Well, we have to go now. It's as good as almost saying, yes, we know that we have the market, but what happens when we're not utilizing the market? What structures do we have in place? Have we been able to sort out the basic necessities? Uh, at the end of the day, you begin to ask yourself, do we really have a market? Because if we do have a market, then we'll be working towards all of that. But Nika Gule, it's been quite interesting talking about this with you this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, uh, Messi. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, viewers. And we continue to repeat it. Go and get your voters' cards. I know that INEC hasn't made it easy. Voters' cards are either at the local government or the world. Some of you are in Lagos, Abuja. You have to travel to your wards or to your states, local government, to collect them. But please go because that is an investment we need to take back our country. All right, that's it this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at our second conversation. I mean, stakeholders have decried uh, the government's not being uh, responsible for um, ensuring the takeoff of the MRO. Uh, just stay with us. When we return, we'll talk some more. <laughs>